Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Motoshop, and I'm here again with McKay. How are you doing? Good. Good and to be here again. You've got some fun stuff for us to look at. <laughs> yes, I do. What are we talking about today? Um, today, I wanted to, there's a project I worked on a while ago, an iPod. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And what? No, what is an iPod? It's iPod. A, it's a little uh, music player. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So you so you built it in in Moto. Yeah, I created it in Moto. Mm-hmm. And if you notice, um, we're going to be covering anisotropic surfaces. Okay. What's yeah. an an anisotropic? An, an, yes. An doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue. <laughs> Uh, it's basically like if you look at the bottom of a pan, right? You know, and you see that uh, that reflective surface that forms kind of a circle. Yep. Or if you look at a CD, you right. know, that's a, an anisotropic surface. So, so light bounces and plays off the surface much differently. It's so much more complicated. It's not just a shiny or not shiny. Exactly. So we're going to be making a metallic anisotropic surface because mm-hmm. the iPod has anisotropic buttons. So well, let's let's take a look at it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, let me go ahead and open this. Uh, let me go ahead and show you here what I'm talking about. You see that? Right, that's uh, kind of that circular reflection. Yeah, these are actually renders of something I worked before. You know, there's, right. there's a couple of samples. Uh, that's anisotropic metal right, right there. So. so what we're going to do, if we see this uh, right here, mm-hmm. our little iPod, Yep. these buttons, we're going to show you how to make those. Great. Uh, it's a pretty quick process, but if you don't know what you're doing, it can be... It's a very long, <laughs> painful process, yeah. right. All right, so we're, we're going to start off with a new scene. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a... Let me go into model view. I'm just going to make a default cylinder. Right. Right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete. Cut these out. Now, why are you deleting those? Oh, you're just making it shorter. I'm That's making it button. shorter, so this is like a button. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we want it to sub-D correctly, so I'm going to go ahead and run a loop slice. Right? And that's just to make sure you get that top edge. Exactly, because mm-hmm. when you sub-D it, it goes weird. Yep. Then you're going to want to bevel that edge, uh, then reduce the size of it. And you, you need some geometry to play off on that top there. Right. Right. And then I zoomed in on that button. You're just going to want to shrink it down about as far as you can get it so that when you're zoomed out, you can't really tell it's right. there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and delete that middle poly. So it's actually a hole. Right. But you just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not proper. Yeah. Well, well, you don't, that, you don't, that's you don't the way it it's all. done, though. Yep. You okay. won't see it at all. Uh, okay. You can reduce it to basically nothing if right. you want to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run another loop sli- slice along this edge here. So. That's, Kind of hard to see. Right on the inside edge. So that gives it the control. That's going to give you the control over that curve, right? Exactly. So then when I sub D it, you have a nice smooth edge. And and the way that edge breaks is going to is going to be dependent on how far you pull those. those exactly. Uh, how rivers. tight those are. These these are the curves. And when you unsub D it, you can see it's really tight. So yep. if those were further out, you're going to get a much softer edge. Right. Got All it. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. And you're going to want to make a new material. Let's call it uh, NSO Metal. And go to your shader tree. And because it's a metallic surface, we're just going to crank our specularity and our reflection up. Okay. We're going to go ahead and tint this really quick. Uh, basically, I'm tinting the reflective surface to be more of a metal color. Mm-hmm. Get rid of diffuse. Well, that's one of the things with the metal, of course, is that, the, that there is a color in the reflection. Exactly. You, you know, it's going to take on whatever that. It's going to be similar to the diffuse color, right? Uh, yeah. Or it's going to have. I mean, there's not going to be much diffuse in that, it because it's reflective. Yeah. Usually, reflective has very little diffuse. Very little. It's yeah. it's a yeah. So um, uh, once that's done, so yeah, that's how you would get tinted metals, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, anodized metals. Right. Just to tint the specular and the reflection. Right. Um, turn blurry reflections on. This is just a quick preview of, right. of what we got going on, right? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't reflect how we want it to. Right. Uh, we're going to want to crank our roughness all the way up so we can really see what's going on there. Right. Um, that'll. The reason why for that will make sense in a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you're going to want to turn on anisotropic surface, this, mm-hmm. this little button right here. Right. And let's go ahead and crank it all the way up to 100. Go to our render port, and it doesn't work. 
right? This is where the trouble begins. This is where the trouble begins. <laughs> what like, I turned it on, do? what did it do? What yeah, did exactly. It do? And you want, it, it's, it's difficult for some people to get predictable results. Well, it comes into, it's basically the UV map. You have oh, to have a custom okay. UV map for okay. it. So a uh, little trick here, basically you're gonna go to the UV, mm -hmm. uh, go to UV map, mm -hmm. we'll make a new one called NSO. And there's one little trick here that you have to make sure you do this, otherwise it won't work correctly. I just selected that middle. That, that magic middle that, that, doesn't, magic, that you never see, but it was there. But yeah. it's there, you see yeah. it? And for now, I'm just gonna scooch it up just a little bit, like that. Mm, he's getting tricky. Yeah, and I'll have to show you, I'll tell you about why in a second. Then basically you select all your polys and you project from view. Click in the and, and this is for looking from the front. Right. This is actually yeah, looking from, from the side. From the side. Either way. Yeah. And what you'll see is you see a little bit of a gap there. Mm -hmm. That you know that little space in there is actually telling the anisole how to work. If that wasn't there and that was completely flat, it wouldn't work. It doesn't correctly. know where it doesn't work. It doesn't know wow, what direction to put that in. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting the way they way, the way they've implemented it. So let's go back to our render port and go into NSO Metal. And we will um, basically right here where it says UV map, none. Right. I'm going to sign up my new UV. And wow. Look, look at that. that. All right. And then if you turn it actually down a little bit, you'll probably get more play on those lights. So you get some light feedback. Fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? And then you would take that in. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce it down because I know my iPod is much smaller. Uh, see if I can get it. Let's reduce that button down. Zoom in. And I, I got can see that little hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reduce but it down could, later. But you could make it you could make that little hole a lot smaller. That that would be the key to the operation. Uh, yeah, you can basically make it infinitesimal yep. so you don't yep. see it. I didn't do it this time, but that's what you're gonna want to do. It's, it's my job, you yeah. know, to give him a hard time. Yeah, once yeah exactly. <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I basically just pasted that in there. Right. And you can see if I zoom in. Uh, here we get live feedback and we Look get a that. nice NSO button. So the real key there is to, is just that little tuck, that little pull up, to mm -hmm. just give it that um, to to, to uh, give it the guidance that it needs to be able to put that together. I would have that. that that probably didn't come immediately. No, no. Actually, I've done I've done it quite a few times, and I, I didn't realize. I thought you could just do a straight UV projection, yep. and I was just getting a solid flat reflection, on, yeah. except for on the edge. Yep. And it just you just got to move that up. One thing I didn't do here, you're going to want to do later. If you move it up, just move it back down when you're done. If you want to be precise, you know. So. So you, so you just move it up, set the UV, and then push it right back down, you and push then push it right back it down. down. Yeah, exactly. When when you're done with it. So. Wow, that's interesting. Fantastic. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much. No problem. Okay. And so, uh, so you can get, of course, more of this at pixelcore.tv, or you can also go here and uh, to get more information. And uh, we'll see you on the next Moto Shop.